I'm RJ Nestor, business and executive coach. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple smart block workflow. And so uh, the point of this video is not to uh, give you like a really dense, uh, intense, heavily thought out workflow with a lot of uh, variables or anything like that, but simply to show you how to create a simple workflow with smart blocks. Now, don't forget, you do need to have Rome 42 installed, and there's a link in the description to the video where I show you how to do that. So Rome 42 has to be installed before you can run smart blocks. So the thing to remember is that the structure of a smart block reflects the basic metaphors that Rome research already uses. You don't need any specialized code. So in other words, creating a smart block uses the same tag metaphor <laughs> that Rome uses. You know, you tag something in order for it to show up somewhere else. In order to create a smart block, you simply use the smart block tag. You can use a, the double bracket page reference or the actual hashtag as a way of calling a smart block. Uh, and also indenting, another powerful Rome metaphor and process, is how you define what belongs in that smart block and what is not in that smart block. So anything indented under that the block that contains that tag is part of the smart block. Same flow if you've been using Rome templates, same concept as you have there. So to create a smart block workflow, first you reference smart block and on the same block as that, you name the workflow. So down here below, you can see the first thing I do is I, and I use a hashtag, but you could use double brackets as well. Hashtag 42 smart block and then sample workflow is the name of the workflow. So that's that's the whole shebang that names the, the that creates the workflow and gives it a name. So anything then that is nested underneath this block is part of that workflow. Any text, any references, whether those be page or block references, any further indentation uh, nested further uh, underneath that. And of course, any smart block commands that turn smart blocks into a more dynamic uh, creator of workflows than what you would find with Rome's native templates. So to put that all together, here's what you see. So on the top level, we have the, the reference to 42 smart block and then the title of the workflow. And you'll note when you're clicked out of that block that there's this little nice blue, red, and yellow uh, icon here that lets you know that this is a special block and that's called up that's called up because the 42 smart block reference is there nested underneath there I have an example of text that will be something that will show up when we run the smart block um, here's an example of page references and let me go ahead and turn my uh, brackets on there so you can see that more clearly and block references and an example here of indenting further underneath those and further and so on and then last, an example of some smart block commands. And uh, you don't need to know what's going on here per se in the commands. We'll, we'll detail commands in another video to come. Uh, but for right now, I just wanted to show you how these commands can be dynamic and create things. So this first command is going to print out today's date. The second command is going to reset what today means to mean three weeks from now instead of this day. So that NLP stands for natural language processing. And I wrote three weeks from now. So the date basis will reset today to mean three weeks from today. And then now when we print today again, it'll actually put out a different today. It'll give us three weeks from now as today. But that's just to kind of give you a little idea of what those commands do. So um, when I create this here to run a smart blocks workflow, you type JJ and choose your workflow. So the workflow we're going to choose is sample workflow. I'm going to run it right here so that you can see how this works. JJ, start typing sample and sample workflow comes up. I'm going to click on it and you can see it starts writing the text right into my browser window here. You can see, first of all, the text recreated faithfully there, the reference and the block reference see this block reference and this block reference are the same exact thing so it didn't do anything funky to the block reference it just brought it along all the indentation is retained and the commands produced actual today 
and three weeks from now today after I changed that date basis for that. So let me just delete this um, and run it one more time so you can see that flow happening here. So, I mean, you wouldn't have to delete it. I just wanted to create a nice, easy space here on the screen. JJ, sample workflow. And what I want you to watch this time is where the text shows up. So you'll notice it's that text showed up right where we started. So I didn't get a separate layer of indent um, created. You know, the smart block itself, everything's indented under the smart block. But when you run the smart block, the first level, the first thing that gets posted is this first block at that for at the same level of indent wherever your cursor is this first block is going to show up there and everything else will be relative to that so that's how um, you can create a sample workflow or a workflow and that's how you can run select and run that workflow so a couple of things to know about the way these workflows run so if to write in your roam graph smart blocks emulates keystrokes so here's what the ramifications of that. First of all, if you press anything while you are writing a smart block and while it's writing to your Roam, it will stop the smart block. So if you're pressing keys or you're clicking your mouse, it's going to stop the flow of that smart block. And that's really important because sometimes people are thinking that smart blocks are being unstable or not working right. And in reality, it's just that they're hitting something or you know causing them to stop. So if you want a smart block to finish writing, don't press any key or click your mouse while it's doing it. Though, on the other side of that, if you need to stop it for some reason, you can just press any key and that will stop it. Okay? And then the only other thing to know about emulating keystrokes here is that if the smart blocks get too complicated, the smart blocks engine may not process it and write it correctly. Now, I want to be uh, I want to be clear about this. Workflows have always worked for me, even when I was beta testing smart blocks. So I've never, I've never had a problem where I've done anything too complicated for it, and my experience in hearing others talk about it is that very. This is not, this is not an issue. Just know that if things get wild and crazy and super long, um, and there are a whole bunch of commands, and the, the commands are working on commands, and there's a whole bunch of different things, just make sure that you test it. Uh, so if you're concerned that you have one too many commands or one too many levels of dent or things like that, just test it and make sure it runs the way you want it to run. And hopefully you'll be testing things, you're gonna do it anyway. But just make sure it's gonna work. It's not a problem. Smartbox can do amazing, complex things. Uh, just be aware that if you're doing something super complex, just test it and make sure uh, that it's doing what you expect it to be doing. So in short, Smartbox, um, uh, when you wanna create a workflow, uh, is just what you would expect in Roam Research. You create a tag, you indent underneath it, same as you do with a template, same as you do with a lot of things within Roam Research. Tag it, name it, and then underneath it, create that workflow which can contain text, references, more indentation, or those powerful smart block commands. That's how they work. And uh, when we get into the next video, I'll start showing you some of those commands. Uh, when I have that out, that'll be in the link. Uh, the link of that will be in the description below.